All right, thank you. You there? Yes. All right. Uh, I had a little trouble unmuting there. All right. Uh, this is, uh, let, me, let me call to uh, the uh, regular board meeting, Toledo Public Schools, um, Tuesday, October 27, 2020. Treasury, please call the roll. Mrs. Barwick. Here. Here. Mr. Vasquez. Here. Miss Barnes. Here. Mrs. Gurka. Here. Mrs. Eichenberg. Did everybody say that they uh, were in attendance? Yes, everyone did. Okay, all right. Um, all right, next is uh, the pledge. Uh, the flag is, is the flag projecting? Yes, it is. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of, United America, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, it's one nation, one nation under, under God. God. Indivisible. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, next, uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Durant for the mission and vision. Before we start with the mission and vision, uh, I know we wanted to uh, begin tonight's meeting uh, with a moment of silence to remember our two students who passed away unexpectedly this past month. Uh, please keep their families in your prayers. So a moment of silence, please. Our hearts and prayers go out to the families. Um, with that said, we'll move right into the mission and vision. To the public school's mission is to produce competitive college and career ready graduates through a rigorous curriculum across all grade levels by implementing Ohio new learning standard with fidelity. Our vision statement is to strive to be an A-rated school district whose graduates are college and career ready. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Durant. Would you uh, stay with it and do the pres uh, special presentations and recognition? Yes, I will turn presentations over to Miss Patty Mazur, please. Stack, you got everybody on mute. You may want to unmute everyone and let everyone control that. Okay. Let me find that. She's showing unmuted. Much, much. So with that said, I'll take it from there. Um, we have Sarah Ramirez, who was named High School Counselor of the Year from the Ohio School Counselor Association. Uh, we truly have appreciation for Ms. Ramirez. Uh, again, we continue to stack up the achievement based whether it's Teacher of the Year, whether it's Social Studies, History, and many other things. And just to just now add to the feather to the cap, uh, which is Ms. Sarah Ramirez. So. 
uh, great recognition and honor, uh, but again, it's a kudo to the district and continuing to put our best uh, and brightest forward and showing all the talent that we have here in TPS. So congratulations to Sarah Ramirez. Uh, and then also I was recognized um, for the Touchstone Contributor Award by the press, um, uh, the press where they uh, go each year, uh, identify individuals within the community uh, they've identified as a contributor to the Tweedle area. Uh, Mr. Savage, um, along with uh, Ms. Huntley and some of the others were all recognized uh, on that night. And so uh, appreciate BJ Fisher as well as uh, uh, the press in regards to their support. But again, this is a recognition of, of everything that we do here in TPS from board, staff, teachers, administrators, and central office members in essence of continuing to be acknowledged in regards to the work that we continue to do within that. Um, with that said, we're going to move down into retirees. Uh, we have retirement uh, with 25 years or more of service. We have Stephanie Kish, a bus driver with 27 years and seven months. We have Cassie Statler. She's a teacher on special assignment. Uh, she also has 27 years and eight months. We have Karen Hall, food service worker too, 32 years and six months. And then we have Michelle Caracas, who is the secretary five, with 35 years and three months, total service of 123 years and four months. So again, thank you to our employees and those who have retired, we wish them well. Uh, 123 years of great service, um, truly being TPS proud and we are excited and appreciative of all that they've done for TPS and uh, wish them well and hopefully they continue to volunteer and come back to the district. Uh, to do good things. So with that said, this concludes the special presentation, Mr. Vasquez. All right, thank you. Um, I'm going to stay uh, unmuted so that we don't run into those uh, issues anymore. Uh, I just want to say congratulations. At, at this point, uh, we usually do more of a recognition for everyone who was recognized when we're in person. And this makes it really difficult to offer them the appropriate recognition that they deserve. But I do want to say uh, uh, congratulations to those people who recognized uh, today. Um, and also uh, rec recognizing our retirees as well. Um, now it's it's at that point in the uh, uh, meeting that uh, we uh, have uh, community comments and Mr. Steck Schulte, if I'm correct, we don't have any community comments uh, this meeting. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, then we'll go on to uh, section four, which is organizational input. Um, uh, I will, do we have anyone from parent Congress uh, on, on the call? I do not see anyone. Uh, the okay. individual I see is Mr. Ramirez. That's the only one. Okay, Mr. Ramirez, we'd like to hear your comments. Thank you very much. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Durant for the shout out for my wife for the high school counselor of the year. Appreciate it. <laughs> Better half. <clears throat> but it is, it is uh, good to be part of that uh, for all, like I said, our teacher of the year that we've had and the other accomplishments and your own accomplishments, Dr. Durant. Uh, so it's good that we Welcome. have that representation. But I do want to share that, uh, you know, this is a tough time for our, our kids, our parents, our community, and, and our staff. I want a couple of staff had told me it's like we're in uh, May right now, and we're not even at the end of October, just being how they feel drained and, and stressed along with everybody else. So I, I uh, do take my hats off to our administrator, our teachers, and all of us, uh, even the cabinet level, on dealing with this. You would think it'd be easier uh, with less kids or... Uh, the things would be reduced, but it's, it's like tenfold on top of each other, uh, trying to make sure that we're protecting kids and doing the best thing and, and learning new initiatives and programs and trying to keep up with it all. So I, I do want to share that. The other thing I want to mention is obviously a uh, week from today is, is election day. I want to make sure everybody gets out and votes. Um, I'm wearing blue today, just in case you don't know. Uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I, I voted already and I think most the country has, but uh, if you haven't voted, please uh, get out and vote, uh, whether it's by mail, whether it's uh, early voting, whether it's Tuesday, next Tuesday. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Ramirez. Uh, we don't have anybody from TFT or AFSME, correct? I do not. Okay. Uh, so the next section is section five, comments by the board. Um, I, you, I, I can go right down the list. I don't know how you want to do this. We just, I can see, I think, why don't I just go down the list? How about uh, Ms. Barnes? Do you have any comments? Uh, yes, I want to echo what Dr. Durant said about the families that lost loved ones over the week. Um, our heart and prayers are with you. And also congratulate the retirees. Without your great work, we could not do what we do here at TPS. So thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Varwood, do you have comments? I do, thank you. Um, I will also uh, ditto what Dr. Durant said. Ms. Ramirez, it does not surprise me at all. Congratulations to her. It's a, such a great accomplishment. Dr. Durant, again, it doesn't surprise me either. So congratulations to you. Our retirees, I humbly thank them for their service. Uh, again, we could not do this without you. I would also like to send my sympathies out to the families of those children that are no longer with us, uh, with the district. So my heart goes out to you. And just so um, folks know, we are actually taking a hybrid approach to our board meeting tonight. So you'll see a couple of us with masks down at the board and some that are not. So we're gonna follow suit of what the district is doing, just so everyone is aware of that. Thank you. Ms. Eichenberg, uh, comments? Thank you. Um, just, uh, of course, congratulations uh, both to um, Ms. Ramirez and Dr. Durant. Um, always, always impressive uh, what our staff and our, our leadership gets up to. Um, and we're, we're very excited to see that recognition. Um, additionally, yes, of course, you know, the retirees, I'm always impressed. And that was a particularly uh, long list today and a lot of tenure. It's very important. I did want to mention, um, you know, quarter two began today. So if you are a parent who happened to tune in to see what's going on, uh, it shouldn't be that long before you start to see some grades. Uh, it was a short quarter. I know for um, one of my two students, it was it was a hard adjustment uh, to all the changes this year, sort of like it has been for, you know, many, many students. And, um, you know, quarter two is a new opportunity to, to start start fresh and uh, do our best and see you know where things go from here um, and I, I would encourage students especially um, and parents to realize that our teachers are having Wednesday hours that they can usually get together with their teachers if they're on the hybrid schedule they can get together remotely so um, it's a good way to help and I know we've uh, had great responses to some of the emails that we've sent both uh, both my daughters and I to teach her. So, you know, they're working hard to make themselves available. Um, administrators are as well. And, you know, for the folks that are, um, you know, working in the buildings to keep the buildings and the lunches ready, um, couldn't do any of this without you. So we know very few industries have to turn on a dime and we have. So um, congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Ms. Gherkin, uh, comments. I um, want to add my congratulations. I do miss those presentations and those opportunities to um, have the high points brought to our attention at our monthly board meetings. So I think you're right, uh, Mr. Vasquez. We, uh, it, it's a little um, less uh, exciting when we're kind of doing it on our own here than it would be if folks were coming around the horseshoe or we were running to the vanity wall to take pictures. <laughs> so I'm hoping our new vanity wall will uh, have the new logo. And as you can see, I built my own vanity wall today uh, because I don't have, I have nothing else to do right but to get on Canva and, and play with Zoom virtual backgrounds. So um, I thought that would be fun. Um, I I'm struggling. Um, I'm struggling, I'm weary. I know that you all are, and I know that everyone is working really, really hard to get to some place that's the best possible place we can be. And I'm starting to believe that there's no such thing, right? That we just can't get to the best possible place. Um, the data and the numbers that are going in the wrong direction are terrifying me, quite frankly. Um, and I 
I just feel at a loss. So I'm hoping that um, that parents and staff understand that we're all losing sleep over this too. You know, we're really not just um, we're, we're not just throwing things up in the air and hoping we figure out what sticks. I mean, we've got our cabinet um, night and day um, trying to make adjustments from moment to moment. And, and I know that um, I'm starting to feel like there's just, there's no right answer. And, and if I'm feeling that, I can't imagine what our families are feeling like and our staff is feeling like with this target um, just moving so much. Um, it, it comes down to a lack of a cohesive plan for dealing with this pandemic starts at the tip tip top in our country and uh, I, I'm starting to, f to feel like we've all been um, harmed by that lack of leadership this, at, the, uh, at the federal level and thankfully our, uh, our governor is a little better than some, um, still a little more wishy-washy than I would prefer in terms of giving us some really hardcore um, guidelines and leaving us all kind of to flounder on our own. But I, I, I guess I say that um, to say that I, I get it. I get why it's so hard uh, for the families that are experiencing it firsthand and the teachers that are experiencing it firsthand because I'm, you know, kind of in a, in a hands-off role to some extent and I'm feeling the, I'm feeling the pressure and I'm feeling the weariness. So um, I just, I just wanted to, uh, to put that out there to say um, we are in this together and um, I am grateful for the team that we have leading us at this moment in TPS. Thank you. Uh, I think I'll just add my comments and I just kind of want to build on what everybody else has said. The first thing is, is that uh, I offer my condolences to the uh, families of the students that we lost and um, just know that we're all thinking uh, of you uh, at this time. And I think that the other thing is that I want to build on is um, what the other board members have said about uh, uh, decisions that um, we have to make. Um, I have been in a situation uh, before, but a little bit different uh, uh, circumstances, but uh, it, it's like making um, uh, the best decision out of uh, all bad decisions, uh, trying to find out or trying to, trying to make a decision that none of us really like, uh, but uh, trying to uh, uh, make the right decision. And we all, we all work at it real hard, uh, our administration, and I feel for our, our community, our kids, um, our staff. Um, this is just a, a really uh, difficult time. And I think I can share that with everybody else. I have uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, fatigue. Um, it, it just, it, uh, I just hope things get better because this is getting, uh, very tiresome, uh, being in this situation. So I guess the only thing we can do is keep doing the right thing and the things that we're asked to do to keep people safe. So that's all I have. Uh, with that, um, I'll move on to the next, uh, section, which is the, uh, consent agenda. And uh, these are items 6.01 through 6.23. And uh, board members, you may request to pull an item from the consent agenda and move it to discussion uh, as I go through the, uh, each section. And what I'll do is I'll go through each section and, and say who's the chair and who's the co-chair. Uh, item 6.01 uh, through 6.05 are the Human Resources Staff Development and Finance Committee. And the chair is uh, Polly Taylor Gherkin and the co-chair is Stephanie Eichenberg. And item 6.06 .06 through 6.11 is the Finance and Business Operation Committee. Uh, chair Bob Vasquez, co-chair Stephanie Eichenberg. Uh, item 6.12 through uh, 6.13 is the Community and Public Relations Committee. And the chair is Stephanie Eichenberg and the co-chair is Chris Varwick. 6.14 through 6.18 is the Board Curriculum Instruction and Academic Excellence Committee. And the chair is Polly Taylor Gherkin and the co-chair is Chris Varwick. Item 6.19 through 6.25 is the Policy Committee with the chair, 
Sheena Barnes and co-chair Bob Vasquez. Item 6.26 is the Athletics and Student Activities Committee. And there are no action items this month and it, the chair is Chris Varwick and the co-chair is Stephanie Eichenberg. Item 6.27 is the Family and Community uh, Engagement Committee. And there are no ac action items this month, but the chair is Bob Vasquez and the co-chair is Chris Varwick. Item 6.28 and 6.29 are the approval of the board uh, meeting minutes. Um, could I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved, Varwig. Seconded, Eichenberg. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Treasurer, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Varwig? Yes. Mr. Vasquez? Yes. Ms. Barn? Yes. Mrs. Eichenberg? Yes. Mrs. Gherkin? Yes. Section seven is, uh, the, of the agenda consists of reports and uh, minutes uh, from this month's committee meetings and are there for information and reference. There's no action required on these reports but they are there for people to read because we do a lot of our work, uh, if not all, if almost all of it in our committee meetings. So there's a lot of information there. Um, so read those at your leisure. Section eight is discussion. Do we have any items for discussion tonight? There are no items for the discussion. Thank you. Uh, section nine, our walk-ins. Do we have walk-ins? Yes, we have one walk-in. Okay, the, uh, will you go ahead and have someone present the walk-in? Uh, yes, yeah, it's a... Um, Interscholactic extracurricular eligibility, correct? Yep, Linda Myers will uh, do that. She's on there now. Okay, yes, I will present that. Thank you. Uh, the policy IGDK uh, I'm bringing forward and asking that we revise it um, and take out a few items on here. And that is uh, being done due to COVID-19 and the Ohio High School Athletics uh, waiving one of their scholarship bylaws, which created our policy, our TPS policy, uh, having to be revised. And I say that because there are things that when they waived the scholarship by law that did not allow our policy to fulfill what it states that we would do for our athletes. So with that, uh, what needs to be changed or what I'm requesting to be changed is uh, on page two of the policy, uh, number two, previously stated, students must have a previous quarter GPA of 1.7 or above. That should be changed to a 1.0. And then the next two items, number three and number four, I'm requesting that both of them be completely waived at this time or removed. And that is because they have to do with study tables and having um, us to do face-to-face -face meetings with the students to help improve their academics. With our students not, our high school students not attending, we are not able to provide that face-to-face -face instruction to improve the grades. Uh, numbers five, six, and seven would stay the same. Summer school would be the same. And then, for the next page, page three, 
There's an academic probation section in here. And if we don't have our students uh, having to have a GPA between 1.0 and 1.7, the academic probation at this time is not relevant. So I'm asking for that to be removed along with the specific language for study tables. So what you would like to do is to present the revised policy uh, to the board for us to vote on. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's been, do I have a motion to uh, accept that policy? So moved. Do I have a second? Seconded, Eichenberg. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Treasurer, please call the roll. Mrs. Barwig? Yes. Mr. Vasquez? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mrs. Eichenberg? Yes. Mrs. Gherkin? Yes. Thank you all, and thank you, uh, uh, Mrs. Myers, for uh, making sure that we're uh, compliant with the law and with the uh, situation that we find ourselves in today. Um, are there any other discussion items? All right, hearing none, uh, that takes us to section 10, which is the early childhood education uh, action items 10.01 through 10.02. And I will turn that over to the chair of that committee, uh, Polly Taylor Gherkin and co-chair Sheena Barnes. Thank you. Um, Dr. Allen, do you wanna run us through the couple of action items that we have? Sure, hello everybody. Uh, we do have two items for approval this evening. The first one is, and I'm sorry, I can't see which one is which, but one is a um, waiver for our non-federal match requirement. Um, we submit that annually when we are not able to secure the um, large amount of non-federal match that's required for the Head Start grant. And the other uh, approval that we're asking for is for a disability waiver. Uh, while Toledo Public Schools has met our 10% requirement for Head Start um, services of students with disabilities, we did have one delegate that did not quite hit 10%, so we do still need to submit that waiver. Dr. Allen, can they be bundled or do they have to be voted on separately? I'm sorry, they both need separate votes. Okay, so that would be 10.01, the disability waiver request. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second, Varwig. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Harry Nunn, Treasury, please call the roll. Mrs. Varwig? Yes. Mr. Vasquez? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mrs. Eichenberg? Yes. Mrs. Gherkin? Yes. Thank you. Now we need to have a motion 10.02, the non-federal match waiver request. May I have a motion? So moved, Barwig. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Varwig, seconded by Ms. Gherkin. Any discussion? Hearing none, Treasury, please call the roll. Mrs. Varwig. Yes. Mr. Vasquez? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mrs. Eichenberg? Yes. Mrs. Gherkin? Yes. Thank you. Uh, section 11 of the agenda is are the char early childhood education reports and minutes from this month's committee meetings and are provided here for information and reference. Uh, no actions required. Uh, section 12, uh, are there any uh, ECE walk-ins this evening? There are none. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, section 13, 
is executive session. Um, is, uh, can I have a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of preparing for conducting or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment? So moved, Barwig. Second, Barnes. It's been moved, seconded. Any discussion? Mr. President? Yes. Um, I would just like to um, ensure that our colleagues who are on site are in places where they have privacy and that there's a door to close. It looks like, Ms. Barnes, you might be in an open area. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Stecksholte, I don't know if there's room in your office to be safe and close doors so that they can all participate um, in this confidential executive session. Might yeah, have, to, yeah. um, have to, I don't know where you're at, I can't tell, but uh, we definitely can't have you in an open room in executive session. Correct. We have that under control. Yes, they have it under control. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so did we have a, a motion and a, and a second? We did. Yes, right. we're to the vote. Okay. Uh, go ahead and call the roll, uh, Mr. Sexulty, please. Mrs. Marwig? Yes. Mr. Vasquez? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mrs. Eichenberg? Yes. Mrs. Gherkin? Yes. Okay, thank you. And as a matter of uh, practice, uh, Mr. Sexulty, do I understand that we close out of this session and go into the other one? Yes. Thank you very much. Also, can we explain to the viewers what we're doing for those who have never viewed the live before? Sure. We're, uh, as a board, we just uh, moved to go into executive session so we can discuss the things I talked about, negotiations and bargaining. And so we will go into a private session so we can discuss those things. And then we will return uh, from the, uh, that session to come into the regular board meeting when we're done. Thank you.
So, who? Let me know. We're all back, Mr. Sexualty. We've got uh, Ms. Eichenberg, we've got Ms. Gherkin, Ms. Barnes, and now we're waiting for Ms. Varwick. Correct. Chris may still be with Jim and Jim. Well, they'll have to put their cameras on so we can hear her vote. We need to know that she's there for sure. Does anyone have, have eyes on Miss Virewick? I think Jim's changing it right now. Jim, can you have Chris use your uh, computer? There she is. There she is. She's in there front she of is. I got her. Right. I see her. I see her too. Okay, I'm just using Jim's um, laptop. Okay, so uh, what I need is a motion to come out of executive session and to get into uh, regular session. So move. So move. Seconded. Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Treasurer, please call the roll. Mrs. Barwick? Yes. Mr. Vasquez? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mrs. Eichenberg? Yes. Mrs. Gherkin? Yes. All right. Uh, thank you. Section 14 through 16. Uh, Superintendent, do you? Uh, Dr. Duran, have any uh, comments? Uh, just a reminder, tomorrow is the 10th annual college night, first college night that is going to be virtual. Uh, appreciation of the communication department, Ms. Mazur, Candace Harrison, and Ms. Matthews for continuing that and keeping it going. Uh, not only are they bringing all the post-secondary as well as technical, technical schools such as cosmetology, et cetera, but also they will have the ability to work on a FAFSA as well as University of Toledo will be doing a presentation for the parents as well as students and how to complete that FAFSA. So that's going to be an exciting thing coming out. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow. Uh, obviously, you've heard some news about our Manhattan Marsh as well as the Hawkins Dem Academy with our collaboration with the Metro Parks has been an exciting time, et cetera, those things happening. Uh, and then again, don't forget to vote uh, on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> And uh, appreciate all that you do. Again, uh, let's keep it moving. I mean, this is, this is some trying times. And uh, uh, but uh, again, I appreciate every one of you keeping it positive and, and keeping pushing the district forward as well as the students. I can tell you, you've been out to several of the buildings visiting. Uh, it's been a long time to be able to feel, you know get out there and feel the warmth of the students and uh, the faces and just the uh, 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 smile and such forth. It's kind of hard to see in a mask, but you see their eyes light up, so you, you recognize it. Uh, but uh, it's been a great thing to see. So let's keep it moving. Uh, again, obviously you're gonna be hearing from us within the, the next couple of days or whatever that may be. We're continuing to evaluate the, the situation socially uh, regards to the pandemic. So I would say be prepared that we will be possibly pulling the trigger sometime soon, uh, but just wanna make sure that you, you potentially are, are watching just as well and, uh, and we'll continue to keep you posted. So again, thank you for your support and TPS proud. Thank you, Dr. Durant. Mr. Stecholte, any comments? Uh, yes, um, the compassion will be released next Wednesday is my understanding. That is the goal. Right now they have a, uh, uh, not a co-bill, but I forget the official name for it. In the Senate that will be introduced, a companion bill at the same time. So those two, I will caution you, the simulations are supposed to be out with it, but the caution is, there's never been a bill that's been introduced with finances that remains 100% the same that as is when it's introduced. So we'll analyze it when we get it. Um, I do know that 
there was changes made since the last time simulations were run and it was, I don't think it officially ever got proposed, but when they're looking at proposing it and the, the one that will definitely help us is they're going to fully fund the economic disadvantage and not phase that in. So that's gonna be 100% right out of the gate. That will help us. And then the other area that they have tweaked is the um, uh, local match or the uh, state share, however they wanna phrase it. And they're going to use more of the um, income is gonna play a bigger part in that. So if you're high in property wealth, but you're low in wages and income, that will help. So that should also help us. But I caution you when these numbers come out, I do not know if they're good, bad, or indifferent, but the rumors are they're gonna be better for the urban eight than they were previously. Just caution you that we've never had it stay the same as it is. And there is a rumor around already, caution is is that it's not being put into the constitution it's just a law so they can always change it to whatever they want and the rumor is is that uh senator huffman has his own idea now so and he's looking to be the uh senate president so it's going to get interesting um real quick and he i know that they want to get cut patterson done before the end of the calendar year but then we'll see what happens with the biennium budget. And that would be all. Thank you. Um, and then uh, the board members, and what I'll uh, do is just let you uh, maybe raise in and chime, chime in um, for your comments. Uh, board member comments? Anyone? Um, yes, I would like to share my statement that I wrote um, because I think it's important to see the other side of what parents are experiencing, not all parents but I did write a statement um, just addressing some things. So I say first, I will say this statement is not the feelings of my fellow board members or any staff of TPS. This is coming from a proud TPS mother of a second grader and, and seventh grader, both who are on IEPs. This is a, it's coming from a parent that is experiencing frustration and becoming overwhelmed when she see her children struggling by navigating through virtual learning. Someone that is also juggling work and checking schoolwork after a long day. Someone that is trying to keep the house clean while making sure that my child's in the right class at the right time. From someone that, has, that is privileged to work like mostly from home, but has the ch same challenges of finding solutions to ch childcare when I'm unable to be there. Like many families, I selected the hybrid option because I know it is more beneficial to receive in-person education but also with the understanding when it became unsafe, we would reach the level red, no matter how or what we were the reasons, we would go back to virtual learning. Parents should not have to choose between our children's education and our children's safety. So please moving forward, I would like for us to keep the words of what we have shared with the community while providing clear, clear communication to our teachers and staff that will be affected by these changes as well uh, as our TPS families. This would help increase accurate information being shared between households. In the same breath, I would like to thank our staff for trying to make this challenging time more smoother for all of us. I will also say it's very disheartening to see the same folks that called our educators and staff members heroes in March are now demanding they risk their lives and their, their family lives to possible exposure to COVID because we are frustrated and want to get back to normalcy of things. We as parents and guardians have to choose what evaluation of the spectrum we hold our educators on. This means we cannot before COVID say TPS educators were not doing a good job providing quality, quality education to our children and students were failing because of it, but now saying our children are failing because they do not have access to the teachers in person. I ran on telling the truth even when the truth is uncomfortable and painful, but as a board member with, with the statement, I am keeping my word. There is a saying on opportunities there is a saying, an opportunity is always in the midst of a crisis. So let's take this time to show our children that is not what they can't do, but what they can do. 
Let's take this time to show our children how to navigate through challenges and struggles of life and still achieve success. Let's take this time to learn how to advocate and voice how important our public education system is and the effects of adequate support that we can offer our students while continuously being defunded is unfair. Like I previously stated, I am experiencing the same as other households with the virtual education transition. However, as a board member, please help me understand how do we safely guarantee the health of our students, teachers, and staff by holding classes for roughly 500 or more students in one building with a district consisting of 27,000 plus students? How do we adequately provide food to students that are food insecure and still provide transportation to students two miles or more away and get them to school on time? How will we cover our educators and other staff members' pay once they have used up their sick time or whatever time they have earned due to COVID relations? How do we address a student bill because they do not have access to health insurance and they must be seen in the ER for their symptoms? These are just a few questions that keeps me up and possibly our administration up at night. Honestly, we will not have the solutions that quickly address many issues we face, but I personally will work hard to support our staff and our, and our teachers as we go through this transition. I will always be transparent and upfront on how, how I will move forward to support all teachers, staff, and parents and students. I was brought up that you can support and share for someone by holding them accountable. And this is what I will do as a proud TPS parent and as a TPS board member. With closing, we all must remember to practice the slogan we said in the beginning of COVID. We are all in this together. Make sure we stand by these words moving forward as we work together to figure this all out. So wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance, and display kindness because we are all are frustrated and struggling during this time. Thank you. Other board comments? Thank you. Other, other board comments? Yeah, um, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on um, Mr. Sexualty's information and also kind of kind of relevant to talking about um, funding and supporting our staff. What we did, uh, the report card group that I've been a part of, did talk with um, Mr. Blake Springetti. He works in um, um, Speaker Cup's office. So I think that Speaker Cup is looking at the report card pretty seriously at the same time he's looking at obviously cut Patterson which he clearly has passion for right um, so you know I think we have an opportunity for some progress there um, if you're going to the uh, OSBA conference at all there is a spotlight session where we're talking about it if you want to hear how other people react to it and that room will probably maybe have more superintendents than we've had before listen to our presentation um, but there, there did seem to be an interest in a will to change the report card. And I think that would be good for all of us because I think it'll fix some of the issues that make our staff's lives more miserable. So um, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, other, other comments, other board members, any comments? Yeah, so uh, thank you, Mr. Vasquez. Um, I had uh, the great opportunity to go out to a couple of the schools um, and connect with them. And this was before students entered back in. And I was able to sit down and talk to some of the teachers and get a, a, a great perspective on the challenges that they're facing um, with remote learning. And, you know, they were, um, their anticipations for the hybrid. And I will circle back around with some of those uh, teachers. But I think it's always beneficial for us to hear from um, from our staff and, and, and get their, um, their firsthand knowledge of the challenges that they're facing. Uh, I applaud their efforts. I think they've been so creative in how they have handled, um, you know, doing remote and then going into hybrid. And, um, you know, I just, I, it's, it's incredible to see the accomplishments that have been made with the challenges that they are facing. So, I just want to say thank you to our teachers. I know that it's a struggle, um, but we, we do appreciate what you're doing. And that goes for all of our staff. We know that you are working hard day in and day out. And um, it, it, it is noticed. Uh, please don't think that, that we don't notice it because we absolutely do. We could not run this district without you. Our students depend on what you do each and every day. 
Um, I also want to thank Ms. Eisenberg for pushing forward with the report card. I, I think back to when we first started talking about that, um, you know, lead the change and make it happen. And you know what, we are making it happen. And so I applaud uh, your efforts and I applaud the urban coalition with the Ohio School Board Association for moving forward and uh, really excited about what the outcome might be. Um, on top of that, you know what, I was looking through and I just got this calendar and I'm gonna share it. I was, this makes me smile. So I know that, and you can't see that right now, but this is our cute little calendar with all these the great artwork. And we don't talk about those fun things because we have all this doom and gloom with COVID. So I just wanted to give a shout out. This is Lincoln in Galkes, and I, I, I'm sorry if I butchered that, but his color blending apple. So I'm just sharing that because it makes me smile and I hope it makes you smile too. That's all. Thanks. Any other comments from any other board members? Okay, I, I have no comments except for the echo. Thank you to all of our staff. Uh, we do appreciate it. And uh, we'll uh, ditto what uh, Mrs. Varwick said about that. I mean, that you need to know that we do appreciate all of you and what you're doing. So with that, I would ask for a motion um, to, uh, to adjourn. Um, adjourn. Um, so moved. Second. <laughs> yeah. Second. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Barwick made the motion seconded by Mrs. Gherkin. Uh, okay. So we have a, we have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing on treasurer, please call the roll. Mrs. Barwick. Yes. Mr. Vasquez. Yes. Ms. Barnes. Yes. Mrs. Eichenberg? Yes. Mrs. Gherkin? You're muted. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.